if we make a whole bunch of the same stuff over and over again, we might track our costs using process costing instead of job order costing. So if we make waffles, if we make carbonated beverages, we might use process costing. And that would be super simple if we finished everything every month. In other words, if there were no beginning work in process or ending work in process, it would be super easy to figure out what our costs were and what our costs per unit were. So suppose uh, in this ski example here in this problem, they give us 42,500 units to work on. We finished them all. We spent, say, $765,000 those $765,000 would go from work in process in the molding department into work in process in the packaging department. And if management asked us how much it costs us per unit, we'd simply take the total cost divided by the number of units that we completed and we'd tell them it was 18 bucks a unit. But in real life, we don't always finish everything every month. So there's two ways to do process costing. One is called FIFO, first in, first out. Our book uses the weighted average method. So let's use that to attack problem 21-1B. Part A says compute the physical units of production. I like to think of this as accounting for the units that we were in charge of. So it tells us that we had zero units at the beginning of the month. They gave us 42,500 units to work on. So that gives us 42,500 units to account for. We know that we have 2,500 left at the end of the month. So that means we must have completed and transferred out 40,000. So if we had 42,500 total, we the problem tells us we had 2,500 left, that means that 40,000 must have moved on to the packaging department. So our goal now is to figure out how many dollars went with those and how many dollars stayed in our packaging department, in our molding department. So part B asks us to calculate the equivalent units of production. How much work did we do? Well, those 40,000 units that we transferred out are obviously 100% completed to materials. And in fact, those 2,500 units that are left in ending work and process are also 100% completed to materials because we add materials at the beginning. There's no more materials to be added once we start on them. So 40,000 plus 2,500 is 42,500 equivalent units of worth of work that we did as far as materials go. Conversion costs, remember, are labor plus overhead. So obviously the 40,000 units that we transferred out, those were 100% complete. And those 2,500 units that are left at the end of the month are 40% complete as far as conversion costs go. So 40% of 2,500, 0.4 times 2,500 is 1,000. So how much work did we do as far as conversion costs go? We did 41,000 equivalent units worth of work. C says compute the unit costs of production. Well, how much do we spend on materials? We spent 510,000. How much work did we do? 42,500 equivalent units. 510,000 divided by 42,000 means that it costs us $12 a unit as far as materials go. Conversion costs, how much do we spend? 96,000 plus 150, 246,000. How much work did we do? We did 41,000 equivalent units worth of work. 246,000 divided by uh, 41,000 is six dollars. How much, how many dollars now do we move on to the packaging department? Well, 40,000 units went out. Those 40,000 units were 100% complete as two materials, obviously, otherwise we wouldn't have moved them on. Twelve dollars times 40,000 is 480,000. Those 40,000 units went out. We're also 100% complete as to conversion costs. 40,000 times $6 means that $240,000 worth of conversion costs moved out, which means that the total we moved on to the packaging department with those 40,000 units was $720,000. What's left? Well, we have 2,500 units left. They're 100% complete as to materials. So 2,500 times 12 is 30,000. But those 2,500 units that are left are only 40% complete. 40% 40 times 2,500 is 1,000 equivalent units. 1,000 times $6 is 6,000. So our ending work in process balance is $36,000 in the packaging, excuse me, in the molding department. 
The last part of this problem is part E, which asks us to prepare a production cost report for the molding department for the month of January. It's just a repeat of everything we've already done in a little different form. For example, up here, remember, here's the units we have to account for. They gave us 42,500. We finished 40,000, 2,500 left, so we can account for all 42,500. Here's our equivalent units production. As far as direct materials go, we did 42,500 units worth of work. As far as conversion costs go, we did 41,000 units because 40,000 went out, they were 100% complete. But 25 unit, 2,500 units are left and they're only 40% complete. Here's our calculation of cost per unit. As far as direct materials go, we spent 510,000 to do 42,500 units worth of work. That's 12 bucks a unit. As far as conversion costs go, we spent 246,000 to make 41,000 equivalent units. That's 6 bucks a unit. So our total per unit is 18 bucks. That's 12 bucks for materials, 6 bucks, six bucks for conversion costs. Now uh, we have to talk about the uh, cost we have to account for. We uh, were in charge of $756,000. What did we do with that? Well, 40,000 units got transferred out at 18 bucks a unit. 40,000 times 18 is 720,000. 2,500 units are left that are 100% complete as far as materials go. So that's 2,500 times $12 is 30,000. And remember those 2,500 units that are left, they're only 40% complete as far as conversion costs go. So they are 1,000 equivalent units. 1,000 equivalent units times $6 is that $6,000. So our ending work in process is $36,000. We transferred out $720,000. We still have $36,000 left in our department. That's a total of $756,000. So we've accounted for every dollar. So that's how you use the weighted average method for process costing. It seems hard at first, but once you do a couple of them, it actually kind of starts to make sense. And if it doesn't, feel free to watch this video over and over again. And I particularly recommend it if you're having trouble sleeping. All right, best of luck.